The land of a million elephants, now known as Laos. A landlocked country roughly the size of the Philippine islands of Luzon, Mindanao, Samar, Leyte, Cebu, and Negros put together. Today, its population is around 7 million. Lao people, like the Filipinos, are very open and friendly. But its population in the 1950s was small, less than 3 million people, more than half of them tribal communities scattered across its mountainous, heavily forested landscape. The nation gained its independence from French rule in 1954. Its birth, however, was marred by civil war between the communist group Pathet Lao and the royalist government. At that time, a worldwide civic organization of young professionals called Junior Chamber International, or JCs, had been doing humanitarian work in neighboring war-ravaged Vietnam through the Operation Brotherhood, or OB program. They were then requested to transfer their work to Laos, and OB responded to the call. In the capital city of Yantian, within sight of the country's national symbol, the Tat Luang Buddhist Temple, OB set up its initial headquarters in January 1957. The first batch from the Philippines consisted of seven volunteers. Some were veterans of the Vietnam program. In the years to come, more than 400 others would follow. They were young, average age was 25, and eager to apply their skills. Since it is also my background as a social worker, I thought this would be challenging for me. And when you're young, you want to go, you know, everything goes. It was truly a challenge for most of the OB volunteers, for the country was experiencing civil war, and the government could not provide adequate health care for the people. When I was there, isa lang ang graduate nurses nila, and then doon na tumutulong sa kanila ay yung dalawang English nurses na tumutulong sa public health, tumutulong sa hospital. Isa lang din ang doktor nila na graduate sa Cambodia, wala. So ang hirap nilang mag-alaga ng pasyente sa hospital. Seeing the enormous need, OB set up hospitals and deployed medical teams in various provinces. In my memory, I think that you, we have uh, almost 13 OB hospitals in the whole country. As I know in Bokeo, in Samnua, in Mueang Kham, Sanyaburi, Wang Viang, Piang Chan, Kangkok, Pak Song, and so on. I, I know like that. Yeah. I, I know that uh, Operation Brotherhood, we translated in Lao. We call Paladon Pap Hospital. That is Brotherhood Hospital. Yeah. OB volunteers work tirelessly in spite of lack of proper facilities and language barrier. The first, the first dialect that I learned was Kin Mueneng Sam Tua Tua Lakon. I can never forget that. Take one tablet three times a day. Our first operating room was made of nipa with bamboo walls. Sawali, when it rains, it's muddy. We were using flashlights. But we did, we did uh, several operations. We did many operations. We did cesarean sections, um, removal of kidney stones, endectomy. In Paksong, there are so many cases of uh, uh, stones in the kidney, in the urinary bladder. And we had no x-rays then. We had no x-rays. So the doctor would just uh, put a, uh, like a, I don't know, a sound. And if you hear the sound, that means that there is a stone there. The operating room is just, you know, just like a small room. We would open the curtain, then show the stone to the people outside and they would clap their hands and they will say, Sato, Sato, Kupchai, Kupchai. And that was very touching. Obi exhausted all efforts to reach remote communities, either by plane or boat or on long treks. I was with the uh, Mekong, with the River Mobile Team. 
In the River Mobile team, we have one doctor, two nurses, and three interpreters, medical interpreters. Most villagers have not seen a doctor in years and were overjoyed to meet the OB personnel. Doctor give us every every year or uh, each time when we went to, to visit them, they, they give children one capsule about uh, vitamin C and be complex too, every, every day. If I remember well, I know one Filipino doctor. His name is Dr. Alec. He's a troll. I remember he's a troll. And one who can uh, be witness of his presence in Taxi a long time ago, more than 40 years ago. I think I went to for having care, I don't know exactly, but very known, very known uh, persons in Paxi. Obi believed that the next important step is to tackle the causes of disease, such as poor sanitation, inadequate health education, and lack of nutritious food. They were in need of people who will help them to reduce the mortality rate on deliveries on um, sa mga nanganganak oo so parang mabawasan yung infection ganun mabuhay man lang yung bata kasi pagkapanganak nila sinusubuan nila ng isang bottle na malagkit OB also intensified its social program setting up English classes for adults and children. I remember about uh, during my, my childhood about the Philippine camp and at that time I uh, was a uh, children of uh, 7 to 10 years old and go every Saturday, sometimes uh, Sunday, go to the camp and uh, go there to uh, learn English, the beginning, A, B, C, D. The activity, children activity, is a very, very, uh, very uh, happy and very uh, like a uh, family uh, member together. That experience instilled in a young girl a love for reading and writing. Madame Kwang Duan Neta Vong is now a multi-awarded writer of children's books she also set up mobile libraries in provinces around the country. I think about in the past how to, to promote, how to, to stimulate children to read. I, 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 I try to back to, to my, my past and bring the lesson from this camp to teach children uh, now. To cope with the nation's shortage of skilled healthcare workers, Operation Brotherhood conducted a wide range of training programs. And I have been trained in surgery, in general medicine, in pediatrics, and then in Obigani. First of all, general medicine with Dr. Ibali, he taught us infectious disease. Infectious disease in our country is the most yeah. infectious disease, like a malaria, so like that. Yeah. And in surgery, especially with Dr. Sanchez, I learned how to operate the kidneys, stone in the kidney, and how to uh, make the astomos, astomos uh, that been that we cut the big uh, uh, intestine and then we suture together. Yeah, that I have learned with him. Uh, she teach me about how to. Uh, at first, like the first aid, like uh, the first step, how to clean the patient, how to make up the patient bed, and take the memeter, take the BP, etc. A two-year program on practical nursing began in 1961. When the last class graduated in 1969, more than a hundred young Lao men and women completed the course. Sivon Urai was only 16 years old when she started her training. 
She later became the head nurse of the prestigious Mahosot Hospital in Vientiane. Now in her 60s, Sivon fondly recalls lessons she learned from her teachers. In the morning, when I was a student, uh, first and second year, uh, before I go to the ward, the checklist, make checklist, everything is complete with the bone pain, with the sea sorrow, and uh, finger, uh, cut finger, everything for to, to uh, for cut the need of the patient. Uh, very, very strict when I go to the ward. If I, I do something wrong, she makes that. Uh, she always uh, took uh, on the behind me. Yeah. So she's following you all the time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why now if, uh, everything they teach me, uh, hey, now in, in my, my brain. <laughs> The OB School of Nursing was the only school in the country that conducted a full two-year course. Though the teachers faced many challenges, seeing the students complete the course was truly fulfilling. I feel so happy that <clears throat> during their first graduation of 1962, I was able to, to go finish, let them graduate, and then we send them to their own provinces. And I feel so glad makakatulong sila sa mga hospital nila. Imagine, teach them English words, medical terms, and they're only, most of them are only sixth grade graduates who do not know how to speak English. So one of, when we start teaching them, it's like teaching abacada, b a b, b you know aspirin, a s aspirin, p i p rin. You know, it, it, it was really a challenge. That's why they said that they remember their teachers very well, like Miss Minerva, Miss Vilma, uh, Miss uh, and, and all the other teachers, because it was really a challenge. And I think one of the greatest uh, legacies that we left in Laos were our trained personnel. I ขอบใจน้ํามันอธิบายเขาภาพของพบใจเนาะก็เป็นมาดามซีซีนพอมิสอมอเพิ่งกระเสียแล้วฮะนะมาดามซีซีนแล้วก็มาดามไต้หวัน
what we call uh, general traumatology. So the trauma of the head, thorax, and then some fractures at the same time, or spleen, or liver. So that we were very sad, and everybody, doctor, and nurse, and student, uh, we were together always in this ward, ICU, to look after these uh, patients because this is 50-50, death or life, death or life, so like that. And sometimes we, uh, we forget to eat. Yeah. So we work with uh, our friends, Philippine doctor. And they do like that, they did like that. Like that. That's the big lesson that we have learned, how to serve the people. Yeah. At that time, Park Song is very poor. It's a poor, poor, poor district. Eh? I think it was just a village. It's a pool. So they are not uh, treating, dealing with rich people, only poor. So if they are appreciated, uh, they are very close to them, very kind, and uh, they can have uh, good care from them. As I remember, they have a good appreciation of their medical competence. It's a, what can, I can say is a souvenir of more than 40 years ago. Now in the twilight of their years, the remaining OB volunteers continue to renew the lives they shared in Laos through their biennial reunions over the last decades. Though they have gone on separate ways, they will forever have this bond of friendship with each other and with the Lao people they served. I'm very thankful for, for them who listened to my teaching, who accommodated me as uh, their, they call me Nangmo. Nangmo in Lao is nurse, oh, <laughs> like that. They, well, they accepted me as I was. And alam mo naman yon yung paggalang nila na tao. They were very accommodating, very friendly. They're always thankful. They gave us something to eat, vegetables, chicken. That was enough for us. We enjoyed it anyway. We would go to the community and spend time with them. We stay in their house, we sit down, we talk. We eat what they are eating, and we feel we're part of them. So they feel the rapport, they feel that these Filipinos, those that work here, loves them. I am willing to go back, even if I am in a wheelchair. And uh, when I went back into it, oh, my former students were so happy to see me. And I was crying, crying with tears of joy from the airport. And I said, as long as I can walk, as long as I can still ride in my wheelchair. Oh, and some of the nurses said, Madam, we will not let you go on a wheelchair. We will carry you, you know. And I... I love those people very much. It has been 60 years since Obi left Laos. Its service there is remembered when they, both Lao and Filipinos, get together to relive them. The links remain intact. Unforgettable experiences for uncommon times. Friendships forged for life. <laughs>